In this video segment for the Grandview Build House for Homes, we're going to go through and take a look at ceilings. Specifically, we're going to look at ceiling options for the living space, a flat ceiling versus a vaulted ceiling. I'm going to go through the steps in creating a tray ceiling in the master bedroom, and then I'm going to show you how to create a shed ceiling with a shaft for the dormer. When we initially created our floor plan, we had created the center portion of the house that I have highlighted in gray to have a ceiling height of 12 feet. So as you walk through the middle of the house, you see a grander area. And if I open up the final rendering of the design we plan to go forward with, you can see the ceiling height in this rendering. What I want to be able to show is an option to have a vaulted ceiling. I'm going to show you the steps that you can go through to show a couple of options for your ceilings. I ended up saving the plan as an option A with a 12 foot ceiling that is flat and then an option that is vaulted. When you take a camera view, let's go ahead and draw a camera view in here. And I'm just going to click and drag the camera. This will generate a 3D view inside of that room. And you can see here's the flat ceiling. Now back in the floor plan view, when you draw that camera, which you can see here when I highlight it, I can actually copy that camera, control C on the keyboard, and then I've saved off a variation of that plan that has a vaulted ceiling. I can actually copy that camera in the exact same coordinates underneath the paste menu. There is a paste and hold position. That camera will come in at the exact same coordinates and information you had set up. You can then open that camera and see how the effect is at the exact same view, the exact same position of that camera. Copy and paste perspective cameras can be a useful tool if you're trying to decide between a couple of different options. And the key to that is edit, paste, and hold position to hold those exact same coordinates and attributes about that camera. When I began the video series and created the floor plan, I defined the ceiling height for the area that is gray as a 12-foot ceiling. If you open up the room attributes, you can see that the ceiling height is 144 inches and an eighth. This is where you specify the ceiling height, so if you want to raise or lower ceilings, you do that through the room specification by double-clicking inside of the room. The first ceiling I want to create is a vaulted ceiling. You saw in the living room how I had a vaulted ceiling. If I take an exterior view of this design, I actually want to create a lowered ceiling, a vaulted ceiling, in the entryway. If I rotate up, let's go ahead and zoom in right now, the option for this porch is not to have a ceiling, and the underneath that you're looking at in this view is actually the roof planes. And what I want to do is create a 3 and 12 vaulted ceiling in that area. Back in the floor plan, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vaulted ceiling. You'll find that tool for a ceiling plane underneath of the build menu here, and I'm going to just choose the ceiling plane. Using the ceiling plane tool, I'm going to come in and just on the inside of this wall, I'm going to click and hold my left mouse button down and then click upslope and generate that ceiling plane. Now to make this a little more visible, I'm going to select the roof and turn that layer off. If you select a component, you'll find object layer properties in the lower edit menu and turn off that layer right in this area. It's kind of a nice shortcut. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that area where we drew that custom ceiling plane. I'm going to edit the ceiling plane. Let's take a look at the attributes. And if I want to change the pitch, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the inside bottom height is locked. So that's a pivot point. And I'm just going to change the pitch to 3 and 12. Now I could easily copy and reflect that around the entry door on the other side, but I want to show you how that process works one more time. Again, using the custom ceiling plane tool, I'm going to click on the inside of this wall, hold my left mouse button down, come up slope, and go ahead and click to connect it. And again, one more time, let's change the pitch, and I'm going to adjust that to 3 and 12. Back in the 3D view, you can now see those ceiling planes. The next ceiling I want to create is in the master. I want to create a tray ceiling. And you'll notice that on the outside border, that's a 9-foot ceiling. In the center of the room, I have a 10-foot ceiling. And then the slope of that is going to be an 8 and 12 pitched ceiling. When I draw this tray ceiling, let me zoom in a little bit on this elevation view. I want to have about 24 inches of space of flat ceiling. And then in the center, I want to have that raised ceiling. And again, that was an 8 and 12 pitch. In the plan view, you can see the way this tray looks. Let me go into the plan that I have that's blank, and let's show you the steps that I use. This master bedroom has a 9-foot ceiling. In the center section, I want a 10-foot ceiling. 
I'm going to use a tool to create a hole. You can draw a rectangular polyline in this area and you can convert that to a hole. And You can come in here and click on the dimensions and get exactly two feet in here. But I want to show you a little bit easier way to initially draw this rectangular polyline to get it exactly centered at two feet. Let me show you the steps. The first step is to highlight the room. While the room is highlighted, I'm going to come down into the lower edit menu. And the option to create a room polyline, I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now one minor thing, since I have two different wall types right here, you'll see an extra diamond. and I'm just going to drag that and pull it down onto the other diamond to get rid of it. I now have a complete square polyline in this area. Now you can concentrically resize this. If you press the letter C on the keyboard, you can pull this in. And in fact, if you do that and press the tab key, you can specify an exact dimension. Now if I try to do that, I'm, I want this to be 24 inches from this side. And if I try to put in 24 inches from the diagonal, that's not going to be an exact two feet. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And in my preferences, Underneath the edit behaviors, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change this to be a concentric resize for the edit. And I'll go ahead and put in 24 inches. Notice my cursor has changed. I'm going to go ahead and change that back after I make this edit. But now when I click on this, left click and pull it in, that immediately will snap 24 inches. If I click on the edge, you can see that that's immediately moved that in two feet on each side. It's a very quick way to get that exactly precisely located. Well, this object is selected. I'm going to go ahead and come down here into the edit menu and hit the uh, convert option. And I'm going to choose the option that this is a hole in the ceiling platform. That may bring up another dialog that you can simply just dismiss. I'm going to change that concentric resize back so I can remove that cursor. Let's go ahead and take a 3D view inside this room. I'm going to just choose my camera view and let's click and drag inside this room. And you're going to notice a hole right inside the middle of the room. And again, that's two feet on each side. Let's go back to the plan view. Using the custom ceiling tool, I'm going to click on the edge of the platform, hold my left mouse button down until I pick up the snap on the other end. I'm going to release my left mouse button, slide my mouse up slope, and then I'm going to go ahead and left click when I'm finished. Let's go ahead and take a back clip cross section view and take a look and see what we have. In this section you can see that ceiling platform and it's actually probably about 12 inches higher than our 9 foot ceiling. And you might be asking yourself well, why didn't it come in at the 9 foot ceiling? This ceiling platform is using the attributes from the build roof defaults. If we go back into the build roof defaults. Let's go ahead and open up that dialog. Our pitch is 8 and 12. We raised it off 12 inches off the plate. If I change that back and when I draw a new custom ceiling plane, let's go back into the floor plan view. Use the custom ceiling plane on the other side. Let's left click, release the mouse, slide up slope, click, and then back in the cross section view. You'll now notice that that ceiling platform comes in at that exact elevation. So the roof defaults affect the way your ceiling pitches come in and at the elevation. Let's go into the plan view and do a little bit of cleanup work here. I'm going to go ahead and delete the first ceiling plane that we created. And I'm going to take the other ceiling plane and I'm going to highlight the edge of it. I'm going to go ahead and set this to be 18 inches. On a tray ceiling, I like to miter the edges of the tray right in this area. I'm going to press W on the keyboard and as a guideline I'm just going to draw a 45 degree line on this side and I'm going to go ahead and draw a 45 degree line on this side. And all this is is a guideline that I can use to make adjustments to my ceiling plane. I'm going to go ahead and select the ceiling plane. I'm going to pull this snap back onto that 45 degree line. I'll do the same on the other side and I'll just snap it onto the line. And now I've got my 45 degree miter. With the ceiling plane still selected, let's use a series of copy and reflect operations. In the lower edit menu, far left, select the copy tool, choose reflect, and I'm going to come around the center of the room and reflect one copy of it. Back on the original one, let's go ahead and use the copy and reflect tool. And now I'm going to choose that 45 degree line. I'll go ahead and snap this over to the other side where it joins in while it's still selected. One more copy operation and reflect around the center of the room. And that will actually generate all four of the trays. Let's go ahead and take a 3D view. Now the last thing we need to do is complete the top of the tray. And I'm just going to use a flat ceiling plane back in the plan view. Choose the custom ceiling tool. Come down, left click, hold my left mouse button down until I pick up the snap, 
release my left mouse button, come up slow, and then click when it joins the other ceiling plane. Now the ceiling plane would have come in at 8 and 12 pitch. I need to go ahead and make a change to that at 0. But I want to make sure that I choose that I lock the inside bottom height in this case, which would be 121, and then I can change the pitch of it, and then we can go back in to the 3D view and take a look at it. You can see we've completed the tray back over into the cross-section view. We come in here, zoom in a little bit. A lot of times you'll see this in the elevation view or in a section view. That's just a area in here that creates the join, and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just draw a CAD box over the top of that and fill it with white so that it looks nice and clean in an elevation. That's exactly what I've done in this elevation view when I added the dimensions in here. So I just came in right in this area and I created a fill box so that you don't see that extra line that may be generated in there. Now if you don't want that line, you can actually draw all of your ceiling planes. You could go into the room, remove the ceiling, draw a flat ceiling around all four corners of the walls at nine feet, draw your slope ceiling, draw your flat ceiling. There's a quite a few more steps in that and I prefer just to do it the way that I showed you in the video for my tray ceilings. Now the next portion of the video, I'm going to go into the office. You can see if I zoom in on the office, I'm going to create a shed ceiling in here. My roof pitch is at 8 and 12. I'm going to create a shed down here at 5 and 12 and then I'm going to take that automatic dormer that was placed in the roof video what's called unblock it we actually I think call it explode the dormer unblock the dormer and then I'm going to go ahead and select the walls and extend them down into the ceiling to create this shaft that you see in the elevation view to create the shed vault inside of the office let's take a back clip cross section view right through the center of the office here I've tiled my views and inside of the room, let's go ahead and remove the ceiling out of the room. Underneath the structure panel, I'm just going to come over here and remove the ceiling out. And the default flat ceiling has now been removed and you can see all the way up to the underside of the roof. Next, I'm going to use the custom ceiling plane tool and I'm going to draw a shed ceiling plane. I'm going to hold my left mouse button down, click and drag along the bottom of the wall, release my mouse, come up slope, and when I'm finished, I'll click against the wall. Now that ceiling came in at an 8 and 12 pitch and it parallels the upside of the roof. I want to change this ceiling plane to be a 5 and 12 underneath of the structure panel. I want to make sure that first I lock the outside bottom height. 109 and an eighth is exactly what that ceiling height is. Let's slide this over. That's this point right in here in the diagram. So that's going to hinge around that when I change the pitch to 5 and 12. And as that updates, it hinged around that point, and now I've got a 5 and 12 ceiling pitch. The dormer that we placed earlier in the roof video was a floating dormer, and now I need to take a look at the process of bringing the walls down in and forming the opening inside of the ceiling. When I placed the dormer in the roof video, we ended up cutting a hole in the roof, and you can see that hole that opens up through the roof with this dashed line. What I'm going to do with the ceiling that we just drew is I'm actually going to form that around that hole. A custom hole in the ceiling as we did in the master won't quite work on a custom slope ceiling plane. I'm just going to pull the ceiling plane back that we drew. It's halfway into the room now. Using the break tool, which you'll find in your lower edit menu, it's also the number three on the keyboard. I'm going to come in at that intersection, create a break at that point. I'm also going to create a break at the upper point. With those two breaks in place, I'm going to go ahead and pull the ceiling, the custom ceiling plane back. While it's still selected, I'm going to go ahead and do a copy and reflect around the room. In the lower edit menu, copy, reflect around the center. And in the section view, you can see that we've cut the hole in here. And if I take a 3D view, I can go in and take a look, and it will look like a hole in the ceiling. Now what I need to do is actually unblock this floating dormer and pull those walls down into the space. Now to unblock that dormer, let's go up to the attic. When I select the dormer, you'll see a tool down here in the edit menu. It's called Explode Dormer. It's an unblock tool. That will separate the dormer into various components, including individual walls, which I can then edit and pull down and form that dormer shaft. Now that the dormer is unblocked, meaning that each one of these components is a separate wall, separate window, a separate roof plane, I'm actually going to take a separate back clip cross-section view that goes right through the wall in this case. 
in the section view, I'll go ahead and select the wall. I'll go ahead and pull it until it snaps onto the ceiling in this area right here. Zoom in and I'll pull the other snap down so that it's parallel with the ceiling plane. And then I'm going to take another section view back in the floor plan and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. In this view, again, I'll select the wall. I'll go ahead and pull this down until it snaps onto the ceiling plane down here. Zoom in find our move handle back here and I'm going to go ahead and pull this one down again until it snaps onto the ceiling right in this area. Then back into the plan view we'll go ahead and run one more section through the front. This one will be a little more difficult to get exact in this view. Let's go ahead and zoom in, pull this wall down and I'm going to go ahead and finish this up in 3D but I'm going to pull it down where I think it is approximately going to meet that platform and I'm going to need to move the uh, windows back up so let's just go ahead and pull those back up. Now along the back we need another wall. I'm just going to borrow a wall off of the dormer here. We'll just pull this around. When I finish up you're going to get a message that it says that uh, you drew a wall in the attic. Let's just go ahead and accept that. Then I'm going to go ahead and change that wall type to an interior 6 wall. So we'll select interior 6 and then also in here let's go ahead and mark that it's an attic wall. And finally let's take a back clip cross section through the rear wall. Again I'll go ahead and click on that wall pull it down to where I think that snap point should be and now we can go into the 3D view and see if we have all of the adjustments and make any minor adjustments we need to. Let's go down to floor one, use our camera tool and let's see if we can get the view. It's kind of a small room. Let's go ahead and take a camera view in here and see what we have. Let's go ahead and tilt our camera up. I like to hold the alt on the keyboard so you can see where that dormer shaft is looks pretty good with the exception I think we pulled this wall down a little bit too far so I'm going to go ahead and pan down see if I can select that wall and I'm just going to pull it up a little bit so I pulled it up above that ceiling and if you do look at it I have a little bit of space in there which I might need to use a uh, polyline solid to get that to fill in a little bit closer it's a tough angle to get that's kind of the process of creating that custom ceiling and producing a dormer shaft in the office that concludes the video on the Grandview Build House for Homes ceilings. We started the video with a couple of different options between a flat and a vaulted ceiling. Being able to copy and paste a camera between two different option plans will preserve the exact coordinates of those cameras. I then moved on and created a vaulted ceiling over the entryway and then we created a tray ceiling inside of the master and then finally we wrapped it up with a shed ceiling and extending a dormer shaft into the office. Thanks for watching the video.